What's up guys? Hey, you ever wonder how the ultra wealthy tend to keep a ton more of their money while the average taxpayer seems to lose it all come tax day? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the strategies that the wealthy are using to preserve their taxes. And you're going to want to watch this because it's guaranteed to put more money back in your pocket. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here's the deal. When it comes to tax planning, everybody always wants to know is like, how do I reduce my taxes? What can I do to ensure that I am not overpaying because no one wants to overpay their taxes. <clears throat> now, it's really simple. If you just follow the strategies that are used by successful investors, wealthy people to take their tax brackets down to 10 and actually in some cases wipe out all their taxable income, you can start achieving some of these same benefits. And, and it doesn't have to be uber complicated. That's the thing. So many people think that they have to be making tons of money and hire expensive CPAs and tax planning firms to help them get to these points. But it's just about knowledge. If you understand the strategies and how you can take advantage of them, you too can be utilizing this in your own planning. So I'm gonna show you about seven strategies that I think you should be considering as a way to reduce your taxes. We're gonna talk about how you can take advantage of real estate to wipe out your taxable income, how you can use your kids, deductions you can have, in order to write off a car, how you can you buy a boat and make that a tax deductible expense. I'm going to show you how to save and use those same funds. Either they come in the form of cash inside of savings or in a brokerage account. Take that money out completely tax free so you don't have to sell things in order to gain access to it, to use that money to invest in other places. I'm going to show you as well how to take money out of your retirement plan tax free and use that to create your own business. So there's a lot of strategies out there we're going to cover right now, but I can tell you there are going to be some nuggets in here that you can use in your own planning that are guaranteed to put more money back in your pocket this year. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> so what are we doing here? Let's start with the first one. The first one you want to look at is how real estate uh, can, can definitely benefit that benefit us. Now let's assume that you make about $200,000 a year in income, you and your spouse. Now, one of the easiest ways for someone who is making money to start generating huge tax deductions is go out and buy some real estate. So let's say that I took uh, $80,000 and I went out and I bought two investment properties. So I buy these two homes and I spend $200,000 each on these investment properties. Now, because of this investment, picking up these two rental properties, I'm going to be able to depreciate them. I mean, this is where a lot of people save on taxes is through depreciating real estate. I have a number of videos on my channel that discuss using depreciation. This strategy in particular has to do with accelerated depreciation. So when you buy a property in this example right here, say it's $200,000. Typically, what you can do is accelerate the depreciation of that property. So rather than depreciating it over 27 and a half years, you can compress all of it down in some shorter periods of time. But that's not really what we're going after. What we're going after is what we call bonus depreciation, where you're able to deduct this huge amount up front. And this is where real estate investors have been killing it for the last several years when it comes to owning property and reducing their taxable income. I have been using this strategy. This is one of my main strategies that I use to reduce my personal taxable income, where I can generate upwards of five, $600,000 a year in tax deductions on property that I'm buying. So here's the way it works. You buy these two properties. Now you have a cost segregation study done on these properties. And that cost segregation study is probably going to give you about $60,000 in current tax deductions. Now, because of the year in 2023, if you bought that property this year, then you're only going to be entitled to take 80% of that. So you'd only be able to write off $48,000 on each of these properties. If you acquired this property last year and you didn't know about this strategy, well, you could use 100% of it. So even though I can take 80%, that's $96,000 tax deduction that I'm going to be used, able to write off against my taxable income. So right then and there, you're basically cutting your tax bill in half. All you have to do is you find two rental properties, you take some money, you put that down, you buy these properties, and now you're creating tax deductions for yourself. Now, here's a question that comes up a lot. Well, hey, Clint, I don't have the $80,000 to go out there and buy these two rental properties. So what do you recommend for me? 
But you see, you don't, it doesn't matter about the down payment. Maybe you adopt a strategy where you buy property subject to. So in that case, you find a distressed homeowner. This is one of the major ways people who buy distressed property generate huge off of the tax planning that goes into this after you've acquired the property. So when you're buying a distressed property, what you're typically doing is you're finding a homeowner, you're buying it subject to their existing mortgage, you're giving them maybe $10,000 to move out of the house or even less in some cases. And now you take over this property that you you bought for 200K and you only came out of pocket five or $10,000. You can still do this. You can still generate this type of tax savings. Just think if you had 80 or say you had $40,000 to invest and you found four properties with distressed homeowners like this, now you could take that, multiply that by four, and you've just wiped out all of your taxable income. So the first thing we want to look at for that is cost segregation with real estate using bonus depreciation. It's one key strategy here that can save you a ton of money if you are a real estate investor. All right, what's another option that you can use? Here's a, here, so the second thing that I've used to reduce my taxable income is my kids. All right, so this is something that you need to do is you need to start your own business. If you haven't yet started a business, I highly encourage you. Most of the individuals that I work with that are saving a lot in their taxes also have their own business. It's one of those things in this country that the tax code it will incentivize you to go out there and create your own business. And they throw all these tax deductions at you to get you to want to do this because it helps grow the economy. So let's take advantage of that. If you run your own business or you're considering starting your own business, then the way I would set that up initially to really, to really dial in the tax planning with children is to set it up as a limited liability company and treat it as a disregarded entity. So what that means is that it does not have to file a tax return. So you're essentially treated as a sole proprietor. Now, wait, I know we've heard people say it should be an S corp and employment taxes. Well, wait to hear what I'm about to show you with this particular strategy. So maybe my business is flipping real estate, wholesaling real estate. Maybe it's just managing my own rental property. But if I create this limited liability company, here's my business. And then I, I have two children and I hire my children to work for me. And I bring them in. And I actually give them something to do. I knew when I was growing up, I always joked that I was an indentured servant for 27 years because I never got paid for those services that I had to perform on my parents' property. But had my parents known about this strategy right here, they could have saved themselves a considerable amount in taxes over 15, 20 years that they used me to help grow their portfolio. And the strategy works as follows. You can pay your children up to $13,850 completely tax-free. That means it's a deduction to you and it's completely tax-free to them. So in order to do this, you have to have a sole proprietor. That's why I said it needs to be a limited liability company that is disregarded for this business activity. But if I'm paying my kids each $13,850 a piece, that amounts to a $27,700 tax deduction to me. Now that money's paid to my kids. And the first thing people say is like, well, they're just going to blow it on bubble gum and video games and cell phones. Well, no, you make them blow that money on education, groceries, and maybe part of the heating bill. So now they got to pay to stay at your home property. So the money is going to them. It's going into an account. I remember when I started using this for my children, what we did is we set up an account for them at Wells Fargo. So we opened up an account for each of them. And then the money that they earned went into this account. And my wife and I were both signers on that account. And we instructed the kids, hey, you're not to touch these funds unless we okay it. And then we could use those funds to pay for their college, to pay for their clothing as it came up. Uh, at the, uh, in school supplies and things like that. So we made them pay for it. So what it did for me is it gave me a deduction for things that I ordinarily could not deduct. But by paying your children, you're now creating a tax deduction there. So kids can be a great tax deduction if you have a business. And with that in mind, if you do have a business, you can also take advantage of section 179, which allows you to write off equipment. So let's assume that you needed to buy a new truck this year and you want to use it in your business. Well, I go out there and I buy my truck with section 179. It allows you to depreciate it. And with again, the bonus depreciation, you can wipe that out in one year. 
So if I bought this type of vehicle, let's assume that I spent $80,000 to buy this truck. And if the gross vehicle weight is over 6,000 pounds, then I'm able to write off in year one on this vehicle purchase $28,900 of the purchase of that vehicle. Now, when you're buying that vehicle, remember, you're not having to come out of pocket $80,000 to get a $28,900 tax deduction. All you need to do is buy the truck. And so that could mean you go down to your dealership, you put down $6,000 to acquire this and you finance it. Well, you're still the owner, so you can still write this off and claim that deduction. So between your kids and buying a new vehicle, there's nearly $60,000 now in tax deductions you've created for yourself and the money you're very, I mean, you're out of pocket. What the, the cost of the vehicle, the money that you're paying to the kids that would have gone into your pocket anyway. So that's just shifting it to a different taxpayer. Hopefully you're understanding now how the wealthy save on their taxes. It's how they approach income and how they look at it and deductions, things that they need, things that they're going to use rather than use after tax money, they use before tax money. So having a business is really important. It's going to create a number of opportunities for you. All right, so what's another way to, to uh, save on your taxes? Well, look at how you save in general. Okay, so a lot of us put money into a savings account, but there's another type of an account out there that works really well, and it's referred to uh, as an index universal life or whole life account. And really what this is, is life insurance. So I got into this many, many years ago. And what I started doing is I realized that, hey, if I put money just into the broker, into my brokerage account, and when it came time to using those funds, a lot of times what I would do is sell my, my, my stocks and then I would pay tax on that. And it would take the funds that I had left over and maybe go out and invest them into real estate. Well, I realized that that's a problem because every time I sold the stocks, I had to pay tax on the gain. Well, then I was introduced to this concept. It goes by a lot, of, a really famous term referred to as bank on yourself. And what you're doing is you're putting money into a life insurance policy. So the way it works is let's say that you need a uh, $2 million in life insurance or a million dollars in life insurance, whatever that is. And you're told that you can contribute each year to this policy, $30,000 you want to put into this policy. Now that's not all going to buy life insurance, only say 8,000 of that is going to pay for your insurance. $22,000 is being invested, all right? That $22,000 that gets invested then is growing on an annual basis. Now, the beauty of this is that, depending on the type of policy you choose, is that there's no risk of loss. Meaning that if it's an IUL, it gets invested in the stock market and it's uh, indexed to the stock market. So if the market goes up, your account goes up. If the market goes down, your account stays flat. It never goes down. So as long as the market's going up, you're always going up. When the market goes down, you just stay where you're at. That's your floor. Now, as I said, I've been using this strategy to, to um, invest for, for many years, and I've never lost money in this account because that is the way it's structured. Now, whole life works a little different, but it's the same concept. But this isn't the tax play. I mean, it is great because you get all the upside potential and you don't have to pay tax on any of that growth. But the benefit is, is that when you need money, what you do here is you borrow money out. So let's assume that after 10 years, I had $500,000 in this account. Now, what a individual would do in this scenario is if they needed money, let's say to buy a piece of real estate. So I needed $80,000 down payment on this property that I'm gonna turn around and create a cost segregation study on and bonus depreciation out and create a tax deduction for myself. You know, if, you, if you're putting 80 into this, it's probably gonna be about a $90,000 tax deduction. What I would do is borrow 80,000 out of my policy, use that as the down payment to buy this house. Now, when I say borrow out of your policy, the, 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 the benefit here in this type of strategy is that when you borrow it out of your policy, it's not like you're taking $80,000 and now you only have $420,000 left in that policy that's growing in the market. No, you have the full $500,000. Your account never goes down. So you get that full 500,000, it keeps working for you. That 80,000 is the life insurance company's funds and they're loaning you the money and they're securing it against your balance that's inside of that policy. So that policy, all the gains inside of there are completely tax-free. You're borrowing the money out, so you're borrowing from yourself and 
you're paying interest back to yourself or into this account um, through, through the funds that you take out. So let's say that I borrowed the money out and I'm paying interest back at 5% and I put it into this property that is a nine cap. So what's the difference there? 4%. So I still make money in the market on my money here. I borrowed at five and I'm investing at nine. You see how these numbers start to work for you now? You're getting the money tax-free. You still have money growing in the market because all that money's in that tax-free uh, account inside of the policy. And you've got it now in real estate that's growing at 9%. And you're using that real estate to give yourself additional tax savings because you're able to write it off through that cost segregation study. Now, if you don't have a life insurance policy set up yet, you haven't yet looked into this type of strategy, well, another strategy the wealthy use then that's similar in nature is that let's just say that you have a stock account, a brokerage account. So you can use your brokerage account. Let's say I had uh, $300,000 in my personal brokerage account. You can get a security line of credit against this. And that security line of credit could be is up to 70% of that value. So you keep your money invested. You keep the $300,000 invested, similar to like what I described in the in index universal life policy. But in this case, it's in the stock market with your broker. The broker loans you 70% of that. So you can take out $210,000. Now you will have to pay your broker back. They're gonna charge you interest on this money. And that interest rate can be pretty high, about 8%, even higher in some situations. But here's the thing. What you've been able to do now is access funds. Let's say you saw a deal come along, a real estate deal. You want to buy that property. Now you're able to tap into this, your brokerage account, get a bridge loan of 210 to go out, buy this property. Then you can turn around in two to three months, refi this property out with under a traditional loan, investment loan, conventional loan, and pay your brokerage account back. You see, this is how people are able to take their money and use it in two different ways, meaning I'm using it still in the market and I'm using it to buy real estate and I'm benefiting from having it in this type of an account. So that's a great way to do it. Now I said, hey, if you want to, uh, if you have a boat or you're thinking about buying a boat, I mean, just got to think about it in terms of, all right, if I want a boat, how do I write it off? Well, you could buy it in your business or what you might want to consider doing if you're purchasing a, a boat is make sure that that boat that, that you're buying has a sleeping berth somewhere you can sleep and it has a toilet in it ahead. So you can sit there and, and use the toilet when you need to. If you meet those two requirements, then your boat is classified as a personal residence. All right. So if I have a boat that I can classify as a personal residence, then I'm going to be able to deduct the interest that I'm paying on that boat purchase. So now it becomes deductible for me to buy it. Now, once it becomes a personal residence, it also opens up additional opportunities for me. You know, with section 280A, subsection G, if you rent your house out for less than 14 days a year, any income you generate is completely tax-free. So what you could do with this boat is you could list it on one of those services where people can rent, where people will rent boats. And let's say I list mine out for $1,000 uh, $1,000 a day and I do it for 14 days out of the year. That's it. I just do it 14 days and I quit. And that $14,000 is completely tax free to me. So that's a way to do it. All right. So this last strategy is how you can tap into your IRA completely tax free. Now, what we do here is it's pretty simple. Well, somewhat, what you got to do is set up a corporation. So the first thing you do is you have to set up a traditional ink. So this is a uh, a typical corp, a C corporation is what we're setting up here. Okay. And so you're setting this up because you have a new business idea. This is the only way you can do this tax free is you have to have a business idea in which you're going to take the funds out of your IRA and use them in that business venture. So I have an IRA over here, let's say that has $300,000 sitting inside of it. And I want to gain access to it. We understand if I were to pull it out, early withdrawal penalties and taxes and all that. And you could lose 40, 50% of that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this traditional ink. And then I'm going to create a solo 401k plan right here. Now, because this is my corporation, I'm the employee of this company. 
I will also be the participant and trustee of this solo 401k. And a participant is just someone who participates in the plan. Now, once I've established this, I will roll my IRA into this solo 401k plan. I think it's important to note that the IRA that we're talking about here is a traditional IRA. It's not a Roth, so this only works with the traditional IRA or with a 401k you have with a prior employer. So you roll the, the IRA funds over into the, the solo 401k, and then the solo 401k will purchase the stock of this corporation. So you're gonna buy stock inside of here, which could be, well, let's say we typically do set up as 90%. So you have to pay in 10%. So in my case, if I rolled in this example, 300,000 into here, I would buy 90% for 300,000, and I would move in $33,000 myself and give myself a 10% ownership interest. So now what we have is a fully funded corporation with $333,000 inside of it. And before you start thinking, well, I'm just gonna borrow that money back out. No, you're not gonna lend it to yourself. You're gonna take those funds now and use them in the business. So you're going to reinvest those funds to start generating, maybe it's real estate flipping. Uh, maybe it's a Turo ride sharing business that you're engaged in. Whatever that business is, you have now have tax-free access to your retirement funds to put them into business. This is how wealthy people are able to use their money and not pay tax. Remember, the money that went into these plans was tax deductible. The growth that occurs over here, that will be taxable, but you're going to pay money back to your own retirement plan. That is non-taxable as the money gets paid back into there. So a lot of these strategies that we have, and there's many, many more that you could be using uh, to, to reduce your taxable income. It's all about knowledge. And if you want to learn more about how you can use the tax code as an investor, as someone who's starting, uh, starting out in businesses, then I would highly encourage you to attend our one day free tax and asset protection workshop where we talk about the business side, showing you how to set it up, and then we discuss the tax planning side, how you can truly take advantage of using a business entity, of using your investments to create opportunities like I've been showing you on this video to put more money back in your pocket and take advantage of the secrets that the wealthy are using to minimize their tax liability. Hey guys, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the event with the link below. And then if you are not yet a subscriber, well, you know what to do. Take care.